Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Victor, aka Vardanian, and this week I have a tutorial in the style of one of the most legendary producers of our time. We're talking about knowledge, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. So let's start with the melodic instruments that I'm going to be breaking down. Let's hear it all together and then I'll go track by track. Great, so the first thing that we have is this electric piano that I got using Yuhi Diva, which is a great plugin, offers a lot of you know vintage synths and whatnot. And um, this is just a preset that I found. It's literally one of the first presets that you see if you do have this plugin. So here's the sound prior to any processing, right? So it's a very nice, warm, you know, lush sound. However, the problem with it is that it's a little too heavy. So by its own, it's gonna sound good. However, in the context of the entire mix, we're gonna need to simplify it a little more so that it can work with all the other instruments that are around it. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and use an EQ and this is gonna cut all the frequencies on, under about 200, where I'm just removing the bass frequencies so that it doesn't clash with the bass line and the kick. Then I'm also removing some of the lower mids because this area gets very muddy, so we gotta keep it under control. I could do a little more if I wanted to, but I just wanted to preserve the warmth that this instrument has. Then I'm using a compressor because some of the notes are peaking a little high, so I just wanna make sure I'm keeping that under control. So here's what I'm taking away using the compressor. And it's also kind of just gluing all the individual nodes together. So if that makes sense, they're just a little more coherent that way. I'm using RC20, great plugin for adding that vintage touch. And if you couldn't tell already, I was going for something that feels sampled, something that feels kind of dirty. So RC20, you're not gonna find any better plugins to achieve this effect. So adding very little wobble. It's only like 2%, 5% or whatever, but you can hear it very nicely. So here's without RC20. And then with RC20. So yeah, it's just adding the wobble. I'm using this magnetic effect, which is just randomizing how the notes are gonna hit. And then some distortion for just more kind of power and some additional warmth. And, you know, I'm using a tape saturation for making it even dirtier. This one's very important. I'm using sidechain compression. And I'm going to be using this for basically all of my melodic tracks. And basically what this achieves for me is the notes, they start pumping every time the kick hits. So if we look at the sidechain section right here, um, I'm going to instruments and then selecting the kick. So it's receiving the pattern from the kick and every time the kick hits, this sound is just gonna duck down to create more room for the kick. Um, but it's also a nice effect. It's just getting things moving a little more. I'm using the Oxford inflator cause I felt like the sound was a little dull and what Oxford inflator does is just helps kinda um, move the sound to the surface so that it's more kinda in your face and more up there. And then lastly, I'm using overdrive for the last bit of dirtying it up. And then I reduced the output quite a bit. So I, I like to use overdrive for controlling my volume because it also acts as a limiter. And then for some sections, not, not all of them, I am using two different uh, piano sounds that I got using Spitfire Labs, which is an incredible plugin. It's actually free. So if you don't have it, I'd highly recommend you pick it up and these are kind of more realistic sounding pianos. They are very high quality samples. And what's happening is I'm just, I shifted them an octave high, both of them. And they're also panned left and right. So they're basically just supporting the main electric piano that we have. And here's what they sound like together. So one thing that's very important to know with sounds like this 
when you're layering two sounds and you're panning them hard left and hard right is you want to have some differing sounds. What I mean by that is some effect has to be a little different or some note has to hit a little differently because if they sound identical and all you're doing is just duplicating it and panning left and right, uh, face cancellation is going to happen and they're basically going to lose any width they had. They're basically just going to sound mono. So um, in this instance, what I did is I EQ'd the two sounds a little differently. So for this first sound, I'm taking away a little more low end as opposed to the second one. And I also dialed it a little differently from the plugin itself. So this right here is the reverb button. You see, we have some reverb for this uh, left one. However, for the right one, there is no reverb. And same with the warmth, you know, it's just things like that. The little alterations are gonna get you a way wider sound. So this next sound has got to be my favorite one. Let's have a quick listen and then I'll tell you more about it. So yeah, there's just something about it that sounds very authentic. It just fits very nicely with the whole somber theme of this specific track. And yeah, this is a preset that I got using Yuhi Diva as well. Um, very powerful plugin. And I just did some compression to control the peaks. Uh, I did some surgical EQing because these sounds, I guess, were getting a little out of hand. And again, some more sidechain compression. So that's basically it for the main section of the instruments. Everything else you see here is just supporting things. I want us to move over to the sample, the vocal sample that I have, because it wouldn't be a knowledge inspired track if you didn't have a sample of some sort playing. So, you know, what I have right here, it's not from like a 1970s disc that I sampled or something. I just got this vocal recording from Splice and here's what it sounds like without any processing. I did quite a bit of it actually. So here it is. Sunday morning. Getting ready for the church house. It's basically like a gospel, you know, like a soul sounding sample. And after a lot of processing, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> sounds nothing like what you just heard, right? Um, and that was kind of my intention because if the vocal sample is too prominent, then it'd be harder for the rapper or the singer to kind of flow over this track. So let me show you what I did. I took away all the lows and basically all the highs. I'm just leaving this mid range and a little bit of the air region up there. So I used compression because the sample was just peaking a little uh, too much. Here's what I'm taking away actually, and it's a lot. So that's what's being taken away. It's basically like half of the sound is just being taken away um, because it was just too aggressive. It was peaking too much. And I wanted this sound to be over compressed. Then I'm introducing Fracture. Fracture is a free plugin. It's just glitches and very weird stuff like that. I still don't know how to use it, to be honest with you. I just probably stumbled upon a preset or just played around a little, but here's what it sounds like with Fracture. a lot of glitches and like dirty sounds and stuff like that. And then Auto Filter takes that a step further. Auto Filter is a Logic Native plugin, as you can see. And I'm just playing around with the LFO. You see all the other settings like fat, like the envelope, for example, I've just dragged it down all the way. So we just have the LFO doing like weird patterns. Here's what it sounds like. The pattern we chose is this last one right here. It's like this very weird square pattern with a lot of poses and stuff like that. It just adds a lot of uncertainty and that's what I love about it. I'm using tremolo all the way so that it's basically just panning left to right. Um, next up, I'm adding reverb and this is my bus one. That's where I send my reverb bus to. So that's just a lot of reverb again to make sure that it's not, you know, as dead in the middle, but it's just kind of floating around more atmospheric as a supporting vocal, not as the main vocal. And then I'm further compressing it. I'm adding some more reverb because why not? I'm doing the sidechain compression again. I'm doing it for all my instruments and I'm limiting it. I'm not even sure why I'm limiting it, but 
I am. So that's the sound. So next we got the bass line. Let's hear what it sounds like with the instruments. To achieve this bass sound, I used uh, Ample Bass J. It's a very realistic bass sound, has a lot of options for changing the sound up and making it sound more realistic with little glides and like the tones as if a, as if a real person is playing it. So this is kind of a savior if you don't know how to play the bass or you don't have a bass handy or whatever your case is. So for the bass, I am sidechaining it to the kick. Uh, this track I actually produced a couple months ago and some things that I learned is it's better if you use the same setting of the compressor. So here I'm using the Vintage Opto. Previously I used the Vintage uh, FET. Before that I used the Platinum Digital. So it's definitely better if you like find one setting and then just stick with it so that the whole track can sound unified, you know. All the different aspects of the track can sound the same. I'm doing some slides uh, EQing. I'm taking away up to about 60 Hertz probably taking away a little too much. See, it's just little things that I've kind of learned over time. These days I'll probably just take away 50, maybe 45, so that the bass, it's a very deep sounding bass so that it can be very prominent. And then I would also probably take away some more high end so that it could emphasize the mids and the, and the lows as well. I'm running Pro Q3, I'm doing some surgical EQing because the bass region can sound a little muddy, it can dirty up things. So through surgical EQing, we're just cleaning it up, making sure that it doesn't get on the way of the drums or any of the other tracks. Fab Filter Saturn, making the bass line punch a little harder. Uh, Fab Filter Pro MB for controlling the very, you know, sub frequencies, um, making sure it doesn't get on the way. And Bit Crusher as well as Overdrive. These two plugins are just adding more drive, more distortion, and just getting a very tough sounding bass line. Next up, let's preview the drums really quickly before I break it down. So what I love about the drums right here is that they're very swung. And you know, that's kind of the Jay Dilla effect and knowledge himself. If you listen to his songs, like there's not a single note, not a single instrument that's playing on the grid, which makes it beautiful. It makes it authentic. It makes it more realistic. And yeah, let's see how I kind of achieved that sound. So first up, the kick. The kick on its own, it sounds a little dry and uh, it is speaking very loudly. And my solution for it was very unconventional. For some reason, I just decided to add a and then boost the lows and then use a limiter at the, in the end for making sure that I'm creating some more headroom for myself. The result is basically this. And then he, this is what it will sound like before. I could probably use a little less reverb, but Overall, at the end of the day, I think this effect worked out. And then next up, I'm adding the rim as well as the clap. So the thing with these two sounds is that they're hitting before the grid. So they would typically hit right here on the line. However, most of them are just hitting earlier and that's kind of contributing to the whole swung nature of the drums. For almost every single drum, I'm running this Valhalla Vintage Verb uh, Reverb, which is my reverb of choice. And it's adding a lot of atmosphere to the drums. And also, since I'm using the same plugin, it's also placing them in like the same space because I'm using the same settings. I'm using the same decay and stuff. I'm only altering the mix. So it's just gluing the drums before I even do like parallel compression on the entire drum bus. Next up is the snare. Again, a lot of reverb and here's what it sounds like. What I love about the snare pattern is that it's not hitting every one bar, it's hitting every two bars. So it's just kind of altering the sound. So you see one time we have the rim clap and snare hitting together. The next is just the rim and clap. And then it's just a pattern that that's adding a little more variety, a little more interest to the loop. So then I'm adding claps. 
And these claps, uh, they're hitting when the snare is not hitting. So you see the snare hits right here. And then one bar later is the clap. And then the claps would skip the next bar. We would have the snares and then back to the claps. So it's a very interesting pattern. And here's what the clap sounds like. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't add as much reverb to it, but I guess I didn't want all the tails of the reverbs to clash together, which would make sense in my opinion. So uh, this is what we have so far. Another interesting thing with the claps is that I'm using the same sample, but I'm using them positioned differently. So I'm using five different claps. It's basically the same sample. However, they're all hitting at different times. So it's just making it sound a little more realistic, I guess. I don't know what it's doing, but it's definitely doing something. And I've used the humanize feature, which if you go to functions, MIDI transform, and then humanize, you can highlight what you want. So for example, I just do command A and then click select and operate or operate only. And then it's just gonna change the velocity and the placement of the MIDI. All right, so next up we got a clave, which is just layering the snares and the claps basically every one bar. Yeah, not much to say about that. And then we have the hi-hats. You can see the hi-hats, they're supposed to be hitting here. They're hitting a little later. I could probably make them, you know, hit a little more. But like right here, look at this. There's absolutely no sense of the grid or whatnot. So yeah, if you listen to the hi-hats, they sound wild. So yeah, I just decided to be very experimental with my hi-hat pattern and, and it ended up working to my advantage because I ended up achieving this very unique pattern that you don't really hear every day. For the hi-hat, it's very important to just tame it, you know, clean up everything in this region. The sound doesn't really matter. What matters is like the higher portions. So I decided to boost the highs a little bit because the sample was a little too dirty. It just needed to shine a little more. However, this region between 6 to 8K, right at 7,000, I decided to take it down because you can get some very harsh frequencies over there and then it just, you know, it just annoys the listener. Probably my favorite part of the entire song is this next sound, which is basically a Molotov cocktail being moved around. It's a folly sound. That's the name. I'm just reading the name of the sample that I got. And um, here's what it sounds like without any processing. It's a very strange sound to use, but I was just going full experimental, so I said, why not? And here's what it sounds like initially in the mix. So I think it adds beautiful texture. It, it just adds the missing link with everything else that we have going. However, I felt that I could do a little more. So what I did is I used tremolo. And what this tremolo helps me achieve is moving the instruments from left to right, just panning them continuously. So here's what it sounds like with the tremolo on. Left, right. So it's just going left to right all the time and just playing around with the width, you know, getting a better understanding of, of the space and whatnot. I decided to take away all the frequencies under about 800. I just didn't feel like we needed it. And then to top it off, I'm sending it to three buses the first one is adding lots of reverb. The second one is adding some delay. And then the third one is adding some more delay. I think it's about the patterns, you know. Yeah, one of them is going to be one fourth delay. Yeah, and then the next one is going to be one eighth delay. So here it is with the processing on. So the last thing that I want to cover is what you're hearing right now. That's the folly sound. I'm using a poly siren. I'm using some vinyl crackle, some random samples like baby folly or maraca folly or whatever. 
And I feel like Foley sounds are such an underrated touch to giving that final effect to your entire track. Because without the Foley, the track still sounds good. It's in a good place. But we just want to add that depth, you know, something happening, something that would place you in a specific environment. So for example, the sirens, right? The entire track, I just felt like it had a very eerie vibe about it, as if something was not right. So the police sirens are kind of a good indicator that there is danger around. Or for example, the vinyl, right? I said in the beginning that I wanted this track to sound very dirty, so this vinyl just helps give it that vintage and like kind of dirtyish vibe. And then the other two, I don't really have an explanation for them, they're just sounds wandering around. Here's what they sound like. Yeah, you're in the woods or whatever. You, you get the point. The, the, the Foley sounds are very important for just adding more atmosphere and more depth to your track. And yeah, with that said, this is all for this breakdown. This is definitely one of my uh, more experimental beats that I've ever done. And well, first things first, if you made it this far, thank you so much. And uh, secondly, I urge you guys to just be more experimental because you never know where it's gonna lead you. You're, you'll just be exploring new sounds that you've never uh, seen before. So yeah, all I can say is I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you so much for making it this far and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Peace.